Hello everyone, welcome to Bo Shane Beach Show, created to showcase uh, great talents of our state chef Martin and uh, beautiful wines from uh, Boucher and Vineyards. My name is Maria, I'm a certified sommelier, WCT Advanced and certified specialist on wine, but more important, I have a great passion for wine and food from all over the world. And today's menu is taking us to one of our, my favorite countries, Spain, and Martin will tell us more about the recipes we have ready for today. Well, if anybody's ever been to Spain, they have a very different um, daily schedule than we do here in the United States. Uh, one of the things about Spain is it gets really, really hot midday in most of Spain, and so-called Spanish siesta, which I'm sure everybody's heard of, happens at that time. And it's really amazing. The entire country basically shuts down for two hours, between 12 and 2, 2.30, and then reopens up at about, uh, reopens up at around 3 o'clock, 3.30, and then stays open till 9, 10 o'clock at night. Or longer. A lot longer days. So what happens is that people get hungry, you know, 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, but dinner is not served in Spain till 10 o'clock at night. It's really strange. So the Spanish have come up with something called tapas, which are little snacks um, to get you through to dinner. And they are ubiquitous. Everywhere you go in Spain, you're going to find tapas. You're going to find in Barcelona, uh, which is part of Spain I was in recently. You can find it in the, uh, the pinchos in the Basque region, or seafood oriented in Galicia, uh, in Andalusia, and in the middle of the country, you're going to see more of the pork than the ham. Little tiny bites. But the thing that's really interesting is that this particular style of eating, you'll find it in southern France, and you'll find it also in Italy. Italy is called aperitivo, very popular in Italy. A uh, big difference is the Italians eat at 8 o'clock, not 10 o'clock, and the, uh, the Spanish eat at 10 o'clock. So anyway, these are all little snacks from various different places in the country. We're going to make six of them today. Uh, several, several kind of classic. First one we have here is a Spanish tortilla, tortilla espanol, which is basically an omelet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's served at room temperature. Uh, it's got, this one has a little jamón in it, which is Spanish ham. Uh, boy, if you like prosciutto, you're yeah. going to love Spanish ham. Come on. Uh, it's got a little bit of roasted red pepper. It's got some onions. It's got some potatoes. And it's all served at room temperature. Mm -hmm. So that's that's number one. We're also going to put in what's called bombas from the Barcelona region. Basically, it's potatoes uh, that are wrapped around. And I made chorizo stuffing to go with that. And we have tomato bread also from Catalonia. Uh, very, very popular. You find it everywhere. Um, it's really funny because you go to a tapas restaurant here in the U.S., they'll pay a bloody fortune for tomato bread. That's true. And it's, and it's given everywhere. We're going to make some tomato bread. We're going to top it with a little jamón, a little bit of garlic. Which uh, jamón we have today? Iberico or jamón serrano? Serrano. Um, there are three or four different grades of jamones in Spain. Uh, a lot of you have had prosciutto, which is absolutely wonderful, wonderful ham. Uh, from Italy, it's world famous. Uh, it's delicious ham. Uh, I got news for you. Come on from Spain uh, is in another level from from oh, yeah. and Iberico, which is the top level, is worth twice the price of the jamón. Oh, so Spaniards are very serious when it comes to the jamón. They, yeah. they love the stuff, and, and it's, it's ubiquitous. You find the jamón sandwiches. Um, I used to have for breakfast. I'd have some Iberico ham slices of manchego on a bread, then put into a panini press. Absolutely outrageous. perfect. Mm -hmm. So another thing we're gonna be making today, we're gonna to have, these are chisito peppers, usually use padrone peppers in uh, Spain. These are, they are the same family. There are some hot, some, some most sweet, most are hot. We're gonna blister them in a little bit of olive oil. Very common appetizer in Spain. And last but not least, and then we get, we're gonna make a little garlic shrimp, kind of a very special uh, popular dish in Spain, really easy to make. And then a classic potato bravas. Potato bravas is served all over Spain. Even, I would say, you know, every region of Spain wants to have their own tapas. Even you find tapas all over the Spain, but they're also really original, the style of the tapas, as well as the wine. So patatas bravas officially, it's a tapas from Madrid. But you can find them across the Spain, of course. It's, 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 it's everywhere. We had them. We were and we have cities. the map here that can actually show you, you know, how you can travel to Spain through, through the tapas and the wine as well. 
So if you start with uh, coastal parts, so definitely we're more focused on the seafood dishes, sardines, uh, razor clams, uh, shellfish, swallow shrimp. But then if you go inland, you will find more lamb, pork, uh, come on. Uh, if you go to Andalusia, you will get delicious shrimp or other shellfish with their local wine, dry uh, fina sherry. Or if you are in a Basque country, you will enjoy with a chocolate, uh, which is a slightly sparkling white wine. Or if you go to Rioja, you will have a delicious uh, glass of Rioja. So it's all about regional wine and food in Spain. It's really my favorite part. Country you can go a million times and you always want to go back. I'm sure you feel the same. Oh, yeah. Uh, so while we were, we were talking about different regionality mm -hmm. in Spain, I put our bombas in the oven. Now, the bombas can be done a couple different ways. They are deep, they can be deep fried, they can be done in the oven. Do them in the oven, uh, it's a little easier to control. Plus, the fact we don't have a deep fryer here, so that we kind of like limited mm -hmm. our aspects. So let's talk a little bit about can you pass me our omelet there? Nice. It's called Tia Espanol. Mm -hmm. So this is smells delicious. Yeah, it's been, it's eggs, potatoes, a little bit of um, jamón. It's got some uh, red pepper, roasted red pepper in here. Mm -hmm. I had uh, padrone peppers, so we had them roasted in a jar. And piquillo and peppers are really big in Spain. Yeah. In Rioja, they have this uh, piquillo pepper stuff, usually with the Hollywood or other kind of fish. Sounds really good, actually. So I'm just going to cut this so we can see the inside of it. I think you're making everybody hungry here. Uh, so you can see it's many layered mm -hmm. in here. And uh, we will try it with some of our wines in a couple of minutes. We can just mm -hmm. take this back. And we are going to work first on our blistered peppers. So I have some peppers here. They're kind of waxy. Um, we're going to put them in some olive oil, um, a little bit of red pepper flakes, and we're going to blister them. We're just going to get them to the nice and uh, brown and black on the outside. So let's walk over here to the stove. Mm -hmm. The fun part about these peppers are some of them are mild, but then once in a while you will find one that's really spicy. Now, I was told when I was in Barcelona, you're supposed to do something with the spicy one, and I forgot what, so. Enjoy them. Well, no, there was something you're supposed to say, some sort of, um, I don't remember what can. So I have here a little bit of our Talcott olive oil. We grow it on our ranch. And the thing that most people don't do is they do not get their pans hot and their oil hot before they put anything in. I think for everybody who uh, following uh, Bush and Bishop learned by now, hot pan, cold oil, not stick. That's what Marty says every time, and it really works. Well, the Chinese, I like the Chinese way of um, Hot wok, cold oil, no stick. Perfect. And we are using olive oil for most of the dishes because we are in Mediterranean cuisine. So we're gonna put a little bit of these in here. Who knows we got a spicy one? We won't know if they're spicy until until we actually eat them. I hope we don't. I hope you get a spicy one. Put a salt pepper on there. And we're gonna let that you hear them sizzling, I don't know if you hear A great it. part of tapas is that you really don't need so much time to cook them, you know. In a really short period of time, you can put together, like, a lot of these delicious small plates. I have no idea what tapas when You do a tapas for a, a tapas party, you can actually, we actually had meals when we were in Spain. Uh, we had nothing but tapas. Well, it was delicious. Yeah, and you know, that's supported kind of European culture of uh, when you have a glass of wine, always have food, oh, tapas, yeah. you know, and across the board, you'll always find cheeses, delicious, like manchego and, and olives and, you know, a lot of different small snacks to, to follow your wines. Uh, that means the winery can open. Oh, yeah, <laughs> in Apple Valley. Okay, so we're going to get the bread ready mm -hmm. for tomato bread, so we're going to take a little bit of olive oil. And... This is our taco tolly oil, 3,000 olive trees here on the property, organically made, really delicious, very robust in flavor. Third, third, third bottle, I've got two and a half bottles of olive oil already. On Nothing wrong with that. You want to be liberal here with the, uh, mm -hmm. the olive oil. Okay. With that, uh, I'm going to put this in the oven too. Mm -hmm. What we're looking to do is to toast this. So you just want to look for the golden color, right? That's what we're looking for. And as you can see, they're starting to, the peppers are starting to boost. Mm -hmm. 
So just a few minutes and they're almost done. Yeah, very simple. I was addicted to these when I was in, uh, when mm -hmm. I was in Spain. With some nice alberino, like crisp, light, delicious. I forgot what the white wine they had in uh, Barcelona. It was, it was really good. Barcelona is more cosmopolitan city. It's very familiar. international. So you, they really, you can find wines from all over the Spain. I'm like the other part. If you're in Rioja, you couldn't find any other wine that is not local. Or if you're in the Lucia, it's all about the sherry. Not like Italy. Yeah, they're very protective about the regional wine and food. Oh, man, I can smell those peppers. Amazing. So, let us see. Mm -hmm. So, and what was your favorite tapas, if you have to choose one? You're going to love this. Octopus and potatoes. Pulpa la gallega. That's a typical Galician tapas. They serve the octopus over potatoes with paprika and olive oil. It's delicious. Uh, I had a lot in Mallorca, actually. That's their their tapas as well. A lot of delicious seafood. So these are just about ready. I like also gambas al chile we are making today. The garlic oh, shrimp. Yeah. We actually had dessert tapas in one place. Hmm. What what was the dessert? They they made. Um, I have pictures of it. I should show it to you. It was really good. I was like. Uh, so did you pair with some like Pedro Jimenez sherry? Exactly. Which is dessert on its own. Okay, so we're just gonna take these out and we're just gonna put them right on the plate here. I'm hoping I will get the spiciest one. Who knows? I mean, we may not get a spicy one on this. Now, it's very important that you have good olive oil when doing these type of dishes. Mm -hmm. And we still have bread in the oven. What temperature did you set up for the for the bread? The oven's at about 400. Right 400. Now. And we're just looking for the golden color. So not exactly. too long, right? So while that's going on, mm -hmm. get the heat, heat up. We're going to make our potato crops. Tatas bravas. Uh, any sp particular kind of potato you use? I use baking potatoes. Kenbacks probably would work, mm -hmm. would work, probably work the best. But um, it can't be choosing the Kenbacks in the store today. So we ended up we ended up with the baking potatoes. It's interesting. There are a lot of dishes with potatoes. We did three. Of, we have three of them here today. Uh, we have the potato bravas. Uh, which has the, the tortilla has the potatoes in it and the um, bombas. The bombas all have mm -hmm. potatoes on. <laughs> which I found interesting because potatoes are you probably know potatoes are, are native to South America. And who was the uh, European power that basically colonized South America? Spain. Mm -hmm. So Spain took the potatoes back to Spain and basically uh, used them to their own purposes. Bread them as Kind of interesting. Nice. And there's I a know. lot of history in food. You can tell there's a lot of history of the country in the foods they eat. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, tapas are more than just food in, in Spain. They're part of the culture for sure. And something interesting about the tapas in Rio, uh, the city that is kind of tapas center, center it's called Logroño, and they have a little different co uh, concept than the other parts of Spain. So when I was there, actually, they have a lot of tapas bars, but each bar is specialized in one tapas. So it can be all mushrooms or all tapas uh, with a shrimp or a pulpo. So that basically keeps you moving from one bar and one glass of wine to another one. So I really enjoy that concept as well. Put on our mm -hmm. stuff in the oven while our oil is getting hot. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bravas potatoes are actually, in some ways, very similar uh, to French fries. Make a classic French fry. Mm -hmm. You pre cook the potato, you plant it in the oil, and then you finish it uh, to get it crisp. So, what we did here with our potatoes, these were all pre-cooked uh, this morning, cooked them and cooled them. Mm -hmm. And they're not really cooked through, but they're soft. 
Okay. And we're going to put them in the uh, in the oil again, and we're going to finish up and get that nice crisp finish. Nice. And then we have a sauce that uh, goes with it as well. Mm. And what do we have there? This is sauce and potatoes bravas. Little sticks. We're going to add a little water to it just to kind of have a little bit. So what, uh, what is the uh, made of? Sauce is got some paprika, some olive oil, some lemon juice, uh, all sorts of interesting things in here. Uh, traditionally, you can also use a red pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. I have one that I made to go with the bombas, which probably go very well with the steel robots. Mm -hmm. um, aioli is, is very frequently served with this, with fine aioli. And the sauces will change depending upon where, the, um, where you're eating this. Do your sauce to go on and sort of crisp up here. What is it? Oh, wait. Okay, You want that sauce to be really dense. You want it to be thick, but you want it to be warm, you want it to be smooth. Do you, do you have any wine in it, like a dry sherry or? No, there's no wine in this. You can put some in, a little bit of vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really fine. My wife doesn't like potato bravas. There are so many different options. So I think I'm sure she still enjoyed the chip the Spain. Oh yeah, I mean she liked the octopus. Yes. You can have a lot of octopus in Spain for sure. Oh we do that. A lot of sardines, anchovies, razor clams, mussels, a lot of seafood, especially in the coastal area, and the Lucia and then Valencia in that part. Well, if you go inland, uh, you'll get a lot of lamb and pork and a lot of mushrooms or setas. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of mushrooms. We, like I said, we were in the north, mm -hmm. northeast there. Um, I had been to uh, Madrid when I was younger. Uh, I was there right after Franco fell. Mm -hmm. And it was an interesting time because it was, Spain was not the same as it is today. Did they have a Museo del Jamón? They have this chain. It's called Museo del Jamón, like place where you can get a glass of wine and any kind of jamón you can imagine from cheese. Really? Yeah, Madrid is full of those. I was there a few years ago. Mm. How is the bread looking? These are just starting to brown. Mm -hmm. And that uh, tapas, pan con tomate, y jamón, that's also one that uh, it's kind of originates from Catalonia. So you can get a lot of that to, to in Barcelona and that area. Barcelona was an interesting place because I, I fell in love with pinchos when I was in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And pinchos are not really from that area. Yeah, they originated from the Basque country. As you said, with a nice glass of chocolate. Sounds good. All right, so let's give it a plate here. Yeah, so potatoes look ready. Oh, yes. They're crisp and golden. I think our cameraman guys are looking forward to finish this show and start tasting all these delicious tapas. Funny, I've only cooked octopus once in my life, and it was very interesting. 
this one here. I'm looking forward to tasting with the Bouchain wines today too. That's funny. Nice. Green is an interesting color because green really promotes. And also brings freshness, right? Exactly. So any dish, especially if it's a fried uh, richer food. Exactly. So, oh, that's going on. Let us go. This part of the trend. Mm -hmm. Bread's not quite ready. The bomb's not ready. So let's do something else. What kind of sheep did you choose for today? Uh, these are uh, our um, 1520s. Mm -hmm. I would actually go with a bigger shrimp if you got available. Uh, do not have them available, so. Music. So I like to play, let the let the warm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the shrimp is going to be. This is a really really fast dish. Once this gets hot, I'm going to put in a little bit of oil. We're going to put in a little bit of garlic. Garlic is going to cook for a second. Then we're going to put in a little bit of of pep, red pepper flakes, a little brandy, a little lemon juice, and the shrimp, and it all cooks down. Serves beautiful, nice, fresh bread. Um, Gambas a la hio, which means shrimp with a garlic. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Very classic Spanish mm -hmm. dish. You find this all over Spain. All over the Spain. And really goes well with local wine. And that's the wines we chose for today. Light, crisp, bright. Probably, goes, uh, probably one of the... Uh, Short one of the sea, uh, seaside areas. Yes, you can get that often in Andalusia and uh, with the uh, manzanilla or fino sherry, dry sherry really goes great. That kind of mineral, almost chalky aftertaste, really goes well with any shellfish from the area. Yeah, probably, probably work with scallops. Mm -hmm. All right, so nice little amount of olive oil. Like I said, we've been blowing through it today. Enough. It's getting there. This is like one of my favorite dishes. Mm -hmm. you can do vari I do a variation of this where I'll I'll put chorizo, I'll cook chorizo, and then put the shrimp in. Nice. I mean, um, there are a lot of ways variations on this dish. You had the one also with the manchego cheese, yeah. chorizo, and the shrimp. You did a pincho version of this. I mean, it's it's. I said, it's almost like Spain's national dish. You know, one thing is sure, when you're in Spain, you will never be hungry or thirsty. And the wildest thing is about tapas. We saw breakfast tapas, lunch tapas, mid-afternoon tapas, late evening tapas, uh, late afternoon tapas, evening tapas. And then at 12 noon, at 12 midnight, they're pulling out more tapas, different styles. It's like, you'll never go hungry. No. Compare it to France, where if you don't, if you don't eat at the right time, you're not gonna get any food. Be hungry at three thirty in the afternoon. Friends, forget about it. Everything's closed. It's kind of funny thing. All right, so we're just going to saute off this uh, garlic a little bit. Mm. Smell the garlic and olive yeah, oil. The garlic, it's yeah. an amazing smell. So, mm -hmm. shrimp. This part you need to be careful with. Brandy. Take it off the flame, put the brandy in. Oh, wow, great. And that shows the origin from Andalusia. You know, here is La Frontera, that's the main delicious brandy. And when do you add the crushed pepper? Right now. Mm -hmm. I like the spice. It too. smells amazing. I can, more pepper, yes, never enough. So we are this, we're waiting for the, uh, the liquid to cook down a little bit of salt. Line the pepper. 
So I'm looking forward to try it with our um, root rosé. Sparkling dry rosé, I think it will go well with, uh, oh, yeah. with the shrimp. Well, it's finishing. We'll go check mm -hmm. our bombers. And how, for how long are you baking bombas? Mm -hmm. Bombas are basically potato croquettes uh, stuffed with, like, we stuff with chorizo today, but you can use the ground beef. Um, they're always stuffed, right? Always stuffed. Mm -hmm. They call different things in different parts of Spain. Yeah. Kind of Italian and chini, but maybe potatoes. Yeah. And they call all, all sorts of different things. They call the uh, bombas in, uh, in Barcelona, uh, croquetas. Mm -hmm. Wow, we already have a uh, four uh, tapas done. So we're just waiting for the for the bread and bombas. Hmm? We're gonna do the bread one right now. There we go. Put a little green on that too, just to get a little color. Oh, it's shrimp. Oh, he's gonna. I don't want bread to be bad. Okay, let us let us work on the tomato tomato bread. Mm -hmm. from tomato. In on tomato. You said also this is ubiquitous throughout. And when you're making that, uh, you know, this stuff, I always look for riper tomatoes if possible. It's time of year that's not exactly easy. But when you can, a little bit of garlic. So you're going to take a little bit of garlic, mm -hmm. going to rub it on here. Mm, just get a nice flavor of garlic wrapped over the bread. Okay. Mm. Tomato? Tomato, okay. And you do the same thing with the tomato. Mm -hmm. you squeeze the tomato as you rub it on. Now we so get all these Mediterranean flavors, olive oil, garlic, tomato, tomato everything's so fresh. So now you can understand why it's better to take a riper tomato, right? Because yes, people, they will have like almost tomato paste on the top of your bread. Not on this. I didn't really see a lot of sun-dried tomato in Spain. Uh, I'm sure they use it, but it's kind of more Italian, I would say. I've never seen this actually. So hmm? right. And then, come on. Top with a on. I'm going to cut it into small pieces. And come on, it's like kind of finishing touch on anything in Spain, including the, the salad. Oh, I remember, you know, you, yeah, I ordered a, a salad in Rioja and they brought the salad like lettuce with like jamon and liver, but then I was like, that's the salad here. So basically you barely see any greens. So yeah, but the thing is salad in Europe is not the same as salad here in the United States. It's meant to be. You'll find these in Spain on you know, little plates. Yeah, the tapas means cover or lid, right? And the whole story goes back to a long time ago when, um, you know, how, how tapas, do you know the story behind the tapas? Yeah. yeah, they were using these little cover or lids because to cover the glass for mine and protect from the flies. That's right. That's right. And they start putting, they say that King Alfonso actually like always to have the food with the wine. So they start putting little bites of olives or cheese and that's how whole culture of tapas was developed. And now it's a part of the part of the culture in Spain. So that yeah. is 
That is, mm. come on. And we are waiting for Bombas. So they are potato crockets, stuffed with the chorizo, little pepper, paprika, spices. Kind of like, uh, like you said, it's like a Spanish mm -hmm. version of a calcino. Mm -hmm. Or soupy, as they call it at home. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. This is a sauce. This is roasted red tomatoes. A little bit of wine, a little bit of vinegar, uh, a little bit of olive, a lot of olive oil, actually. Gives nice color and a little more flavor. It's got paprika. This actually would be very good on the bombas, too. Hard to make any tapas without using paprika, right? You can't. I think every recipe it's here has paprika in it. And we go. That's our last for our uh, well, some bombas. Mm -hmm. Uh, stuffed with stuffed with uh, chorizo. So let us go check out our wine with the with the, uh, the dishes. So Maria, let's. Okay, hey, thank you. Want to start with? Oh, hard decision with all this. Uh, oh, we can maybe start with the shrimp. Okay. Uh, and with the brut rosé, it's our dry sparkling wine made by traditional method, Champenoise, the same wine used for uh, champagne production in, in uh, France, and we use the Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot Gris. Oh. If you are in Spain and enjoying the, the shrimp, you will pay with local wine in Andalusia with cherry. If you are in uh, Barcelona and Catalonia, you will pair with cava, which is their um, traditional method made uh, sparkling wine, different grapes, okay. Macabeo, Parellada, and Charolo. But yeah, we will have a brutal day today. Cheers. And as you already mentioned in the past, when you do the wine and food pairing, taste wine always on its own. See how it tastes um, on its own and then taste the food and wine again. That will be the best way to compare and see how they complement each this other. Great batch. Mm -hmm. Nice thing about this dish is the sauce. That's where the bread comes in. Mm. All the flavors. Shrimp is pretty neutral, pretty nice. but we added paprika, garlic, olive oil, so we have a lot of different aromas. Really nice spice. And you have the bubbles and like bright acid they cut through the to the shrimp, and also the saltiness from the dish in, in case the flavors from the wine. I really get a nice kind of pink grapefruit, uh, red tart fruits, pomegranate, little apple. Really nice. So I'm going to pick potato bravas. Mm -hmm. Which wine would you want to have with this? Oh, I'll try with the uh, with the Pinot Blanc. You can also pair with a uh, sparkling wine. I mean, spark dry sparkling wine. It's pretty safe choice with anything, especially with the fried foods and richer dishes, um, because as I said, the bubbles, the acidity that really cut nicely through the to the richness and uh, fattiness of the dish as well. Uh, we also choose Pinot Blanc that has a little bit of the kind of herbaceous aroma besides the apple and citrus. If you're in Spain, you will pair with a crisp white from Spain, like Alberino. It's really a perfect match. Or Macabeo, Godeo, White Rioja, a lot of options. Cava. Now, I've mentioned before, the thing that really matches with wine and food is your finish. 
mm-hmm. because, as you said, you're not you're not putting the food into a mouthful of wine. It's all. about the aftertaste it's about of the both, aftertaste how there. they complement it, how they match each other. Very important for the long finishes. Your pick, which one next? Hmm. Let's try with the peppers. Okay, let's see if you get the spicy one. Which one you want? Okay, give me the first one. And I think I will still stay with the Pinot Blanc uh, okay. for this one, just in case the, the so pepper case is spicy. spicy. And, you know, you, as you can see, we also choose Swan Con Pinot Noir. That's our signature grape here in Bouchain. And that will be the lightest Pinot Noir, really elegant, light, aromatic, very soft tannins. Also Pinot Mounier, we'll talk about that one later. But when we have so many different flavors, we have some spicy aroma, we have like garlic, fried food, a lot of different options. You want to go with the lighter wines. Oh, aromatic, oh, bright oh, acidity, um, not high in alcohol, not a lot of oak aging. So that that is the, our choice for today as well. Why well, is not spicy? So let's see if I'm more lucky than you. Mine's not spicy either. That means I will have to get another one. I'm going to try some of tomato bread next. Oh, actually, let's do the bombas next. Mm-hmm. Still very good with Pinot Blanc. Any vegetable, real vegetable with the Pinot Blanc really goes nicely. This one, I think we want to go with the red wine. Okay. And I think this will go well since it's a fried rich food. It will go well with the sparkling wine. It will go also well with, let's, let's try with the swan con. Okay. The swan con is the most elegant. Uh, aromatic of our, of you our... can you can read show that's really a sign it's a, it's a pinot noir it's very light thin skin grape um uh, get kind of floral notes rose petals little cherries strawberry soft tannins yeah, well, They're delicious. And I think it's a great match with the Pinot Noir. And even, you know, the, the fat, salt, fat, protein really makes your wine and tannins a little lighter and softer. So wine really tastes okay. And I think it will go well with sparkling wine as well, but also with the Pinot Meunier. Okay, well. Pinot Meunier might sound like great that you're not really familiar with. Even I'm sure you all had it in the past because it's one of the three champagne grape made for the champagne, used for the champagne production besides Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Not often found as a, as a dry red wine. So, so you want the torta or the pantalotti? Um, uh, Let's do tortilla espanol, some more potatoes and eggs. This is kind of perfect breakfast that you can make at home as well. It's super easy and... I actually had this for breakfast a couple mm-hmm. of times. What wine would you recommend with this? So I would try with the Pinot Meunier. Okay. Thing is, this particular dish is served at room temperature, which is kind mm-hmm. of different than most egg dishes. Yeah, Pinot Noir, uh, Pinot Meunier, as you said, it's really light, very aromatic, but also very light, soft tannins. Um, I think it will go well with the uh, with the uh, Brut Rosé. I think it will go well with all four I wines. Think all these wines go very well with it. Mm-hmm. So I guess the last thing is the pet tomato. Yes. And you know, when you're looking for a perfect wine and food match, something to look is uh, it's a body intensity texture of both. So nothing to overwhelm, right? They should complement each other. That's a and, problem. It's a problem here in, in Napa County, actually. I mean Napa County is known for uh cabinet salvage. I remember sitting in a restaurant watching the table next to us order a uh, couple fish dishes with a bottle of cab and he was like laughing. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, overall, trust your own palate, but certainly not something to recommend because Cabernet's a very rich wine and has a lot of tannins and it's very intense. So that will really overwhelm your fish and often be a very unpleasant experience too. So, However, if you like mm-hmm. Cabernet with Branzino, yeah. But the best way to find really what you like is to being exposed and taste different wines and different food and different matches. You know, if one is my favorite match, doesn't mean it's Martis as well. So which one would you recommend with this one? Oh, so it's, we have some pomon, a little tomato. I think actually I would go with the sparkling or okay. I would go with the Pinot Noir. We're we'll try sparkling first. It's very nice. Hmm? Exactly, or without anything too. But yes. And I think Pinot Noir will go great as well. And that's the fun part. As you said, taste different wines for different foods. Look, you know, what is the, the, the best match that you enjoy. I feel like we traveled to, to Spain for one hour at least. And what will be the uh, the... Bush and Bicho next Sunday. We have another delicious cuisine to feature. Mm-hmm. Food in Mexico. Food in Mexico is kind of interesting. Chef Martin, I have a question. Okay. So, um, having said, I said, she's calling her a Add a little chicken stock. Very simple. Uh, you might want to, you know, it's your flour that's causing it to congeal. So you might just want to add some chicken stock to it as you're cooking it and, and put it on your uh, potatoes warm because um, it'll be, it'll be um, uh, much more, uh, how would you say, loose and more, more together. But then again, just, you know, we add a little chicken stock until you get the consistency you want. As far as the spices go, um, don't want to sound condescending, but uh, generally speaking, uh, less expensive spices tend to uh, be more grainy because they use a little bit more of the shells from the spices. Um, that being said, um, like I said, a little bit of more liquid into the into the, uh, the end there to, to make it a little bit uh, easier to deal with. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Oh, nice. Uh, good stuff. Yes. Great. Good stuff. Could have also added it too fast into the, uh, so you put it into the uh, the oil, and if you put it in too fast, it'll tend to clump. That's one of the things that would happen on in culinary school. If you're adding anything to oil, it clumps if you don't add it slowly. So that, that could also be a situation, too. That's just practice. Any more questions about the wine or? Recipes for today. So some of you uh, are invited to stay tuned. Uh, Rob, mm-hmm. Rob, or... our wine educator Rob Fisher will be with you in um, five minutes, and he will be happy to answer any qu- wine questions you may have. And we thank you very much for joining us today. And I'm going to say cheers. Salud, since Salud. We are, I feel like we're still in Spain. So yeah, salute, cheers, cheers, everyone. See you again next week. See you next week.